Welcome to LFC, your local sports channel. I'm Bob Hintz, along with Brent Musgrove. It's Tuesday, February the 11th, 2014. Lady Crabbers of the Penn South Conference 10 are playing host to the hot Bethel Bruins out of the Merrimack, Monitor Merrimack. We'll go to Brent Musgrove, who has Roy Johnson. Oh, wait a second. He's not ready yet. Okay. <laughs> The Lady uh, Bruins are real hot. They have won the Mer Monitor Merrimack Conference 2 with a 17-4, and 8-2 record. They are number one seed. This is a rematch earlier this year when the Bethel Bruins played host to the Crabbers and lost. Okay, let's go over to Brent Musgrove, who has Roy Johnson. Thanks, Bob. I'm here with head coach Roy Johnson of Lady Bethel Bruins. What a great year, coach. You're coming here tonight. What is it, 18, 17 and 4 and 8 and 2 in the conference? First place in your conference. What a great year to start it with. Having won last night, where does that place you in the playoff picture? Well, we end up getting the first round by in our uh, conference tournament, but we automatically get a region, um, the region seed, number one seed in the region. Well, that's, that's awesome. We get to follow that, and Bob and I will be there no matter what. But let me let me say this. I was going over your team scores and stuff like you got some great players, and we'll talk about a couple in a minute. But I was just amazed at the balance, just like last night. You had four players that were between five and seven points, two players with ten points. It's difficult to guard a team that's so evenly balanced. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, that's what's so special about these group of girls. You know, nobody wants, nobody has to be the star. They want to just play as a team. They don't care who gets all the shots or who's getting the shots for that night. But they, the whole thing at the end of the night, they want to win. And that's, that's what we've been doing. Uh, let's go to a couple of players here. You've had Keely Foster with you now for four years. Uh, not enough description out there. We've been watching her all this time. What a great development. Let's talk a little bit about her and where she's going to school. Well, you know, Keely, if, if you were to say that that was our superstar on the team, that, they would probably label Keely that person. But the thing about Keely is she wants to win, and she knows to win, she has to play as a team, and she does a great job doing other things. She has um, increased her ball handling in terms of assists. She makes more steals, rebounding, but yet she can still score when she has to. And so she just become an all-around player, and it, and it shows on, our, on the court for us. We've loved watching the growth over the last four years. Now let's talk about somebody a little bit young. Let's talk about about Naira Williams she has really come on here lately yes Naira Williams has really stepped up you know she was she was just a freshman last year but did real well for us but this year she's coming to a score and a playmaker and it's, it's it has helped us tremendously as a team and has gotten her confidence to a level where she feels like she can dominate anybody when she has the ball couldn't have come at a better time coming into the playoffs let me give you one last question uh, we know this game doesn't count much for the standings as far as both conferences, but here it is. It's what we call a season within a season. This is the old Peninsula District. This is the oldest rivalry out there. This is Bethel Hampton. Let's tell us a little bit about what this means to the players and, and coaches themselves. Well, you know, what's funny is a couple of weeks ago when it was almost said that we might not play this game, the girls were uh, really upset. You know, they just want to be able to play Hampton. Anytime you have an opportunity with Bethel versus Hampton, you just want to prove yourself as, as a school for the pride in the area. And, you know, it's not that you're trying to hurt anybody, but it's just going out there, playing hard. The competition is there. And, you know, to end your season with a win, you know. And we still remember what happened on game one of the year. So th that was another reason, too. Coach, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. Good luck tonight and good thank luck you. in the playoffs. We're looking forward to a long season. Thanks, Thanks thank so much. Okay, Bob, back over to you. All right. Thanks, Brent. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Lady Crabbers. They're in the Penn South Conference 10 with a 16-5, and 5-1 record. They are number two seed, but difference because they got seven teams within their conference. They don't get the bye. If you have six teams like they have in uh, the Monitor Merrimack, then number one, number two get a bye. Well, Hampton doesn't. They will have to play uh, – this week, in fact, they will play Saturday of this week, and they will uh, have played so well this year that, that you know, why didn't we get the dag on the, the uh, bye? But that happens sometimes because the way it, the new system is set up, and uh, Brent is doing a great job with these coaches. We'll get a lot of information for him right now. He's got Coach Allen Jones over from Hampton, his first year coach. Let's go over to Brent. Uh, thanks again, Bob. I'm here with head coach Alan Jones of the Hampton Crabbers. First year coming and taking over this team. Uh, you've been coaching around 14, 15 years. You've been in high school ball. You've been in college ball. When you came in and took over this team, 
You know the reputation of the Hampton Crabbers in all sports. Tell us what your first thoughts were when you came in and took over this program. Uh, great program. Uh, David Six did a great job with the program. He's doing a great job at Hampton University. Uh, basically, uh, I knew it was some talented girls. It was just a matter of them mixing with, with what, you know, what I was bringing to the table and me mixing, you know, basically marinating and kind of getting the chemistry. How long did it take you? Once you're seniors buy in, they're your leaders. It seems like everything just kind of folded together. Am I reading that right? You're reading it correct. You're reading it correct. And it, it took um, maybe about half of the season before that you actually started to see that start to happen. Let's talk about a couple of those big players. Let's talk about Kadisha Bergen. She's going to college, and she's been a big part of this program for a long time. Tell us a little bit about her. Khadija's a great player, great leader. Um, she does everything that I would ask. I always tell people she's my mind in action. That's awesome. Let's go about one more. Now, she's going to uh, she's going Temple. Temple. She's going to Temple. Yeah, she's going to Temple. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Malika Sa Sales. I think I'm saying that correct. Uh, you, Ma Michaela. Michaela Sales going to Hampton University. She's going to be part of David Six's crew. Uh, she is um, great as well, great leader, uh, great, great floor general. She keeps my team alive. She keeps the energy going. She does the little things. All right, one more question. Where are y'all now in the playoffs coming into this? Where do we go from here? We're in second place. We're going to play Great Bridge Saturday at Hickory High School. Last question. What do you see in this Bethel team tonight? All rivalry, season within a season. A, a game, a definite game. I mean, 100%. I mean, it's a rivalry. Unfortunately, the rivalry doesn't mean as much as it used to mean, but it's a rivalry still the same, and I, I expect them to play it that way. Coach, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. Right. Good luck tonight. I hope thank we get you. the follow away all the way through. Appreciate okay, Bob, back to you. All right, thanks. Brent, I, I've never seen, heard you do so many questions so quick, but that was really good. Well, last night the Lady Bruins defeated Grassfield 52-20 to to win the Monitor Merrimack Conference 2 championship, and they get that by. They will travel to Woodside High, and they are 6-5, and 5-1 and one in conference play. Led by Keely Foster and Brittany uh, Bryan, they each had 10 points last night. The Lady Crabbers uh, played and defeated the Indian River Braves last night when uh, Berger had 23 points and they won 73 to 42 and secured a second place when, uh, in the Penn South Conference 10. They will travel to Hickory, as you heard the coach say, they're gonna go over there Saturday and they will play the seventh seed. Before we introduce the next we're getting ready for the uh, National Anthem. Uh, yeah, it's great to be back again this year if you and I get a chance to do this. So. Yeah, I, re I really appreciate uh, we have an opportunity to do this. This is a game that has been uh, really well played all through the year. We have the uh, con honor guard from the uh, Air Force JROTC here tonight. They're presenting the colors, and uh, we appreciate the, the help we get here from Hampton High School. Uh, uh, Mike Trevis and his group have just done a great job, and uh, Mr. Blau over here that handles everything else, uh, really great. So uh, why, don't, why don't we pause and uh, let them do this wonderful little work they do here. I'm already tired watching the march. <laughs> <laughs>
Rock and roll, baby. Well, that was nicely done. Uh, it's, it's always nice to see a little bit of respect when we come to these games still, whether it's football or basketball or baseball. You, you still have that moment that they recognize the, the armed forces and the people in service. So we always like to see that happen. Well, and, you know, talking to uh, uh, Roy Johnson, and he said, you know, the, the number two seed. Right. And that means they got to buy their, their play. Their play their They're team. talking about Allen. Huh? You're talking about Hampton? No, I'm talking about, about Bethel. Bethel. Okay. They're, they're going to, they will play their games at Woodside. Yeah. Well, Hampton, both boys and girls have to travel all the way to Hickory. Now, Hickory, is, you'll, you'll almost to North Carolina to right. go by Hickory. So, yeah. that's quite a thing. Here we go with the starting lineup. Well, I always think about Hickory. I'm halfway to Nags Hill. That's yeah. how I, <laughs> I look at Hickory. So. If we go to any of those games, it will be a, it will be a day trip. My wife will love to go, so. We might just load up and head over there, catch some of those games. There you go. These are the starters for the uh, Bethel Bruins. Number 40, Kelsey Phillips. We've got uh, number four, Jamie Thomas, Keely Foster, 21, Brittany Bryson, 30. Kayla Scott, 31, and Ira Williams, 32. And that four years over there at Bethel High School for Roy Johnson. He comes in and she, start, she shows up. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> Number five, Naima Caldwell. Great shot, guys. Number 21. It's great camera work. That's... That's My buddy Steve Fry is there on that camera. Sarah Pearson. Hampton's got a little height. This could prove to be a very interesting game. Yeah. Uh, I got Letitia Smith is uh, number four. Now, now Asia Caldwell Darte is number five. Kadisha Berger, 21. Dara Parson, number 23. And Michaela Sale. Number 32. We got four girls going to sc schools, which is great. Kadia Berger's going to Temple University. Michaela Sale going to Hampton University. Keely Foster going to UNC Greensboro. And Brittany Bryson is going to a Division II school. Goldley Beeman up in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Well, that's just nice to see these kids get some help off to college. We know. Uh... They're coming out of some good programs because a lot of people follow these programs, both boys and girls. There's a lot of talent's gone through these two schools over the years. Uh, June and I have been watching. Some of these players you see coming out are going to be for the last time, and it's been a lot of talent that uh, we've had the good fortune to, to watch here. Bob. And we have that. And I'm going to attempt to keep up with some of this scoring as it goes on. Uh, these teams are capable of putting it up. Hampton got this, this pass, which was no surprise, is a little bit better. And, and Berger is, she's going to take the first shot. Rebound. It's two rebounds for Hampton. Uh -oh. And 32, she gets her first two, first bucket. That's Michaela Sales. That's Michaela Sales yeah. makes the first score. Look at this drive. Oh, nice bucket. And Keely Foster. Yeah, that's the one you got to watch for. She's uh, she takes it. She'll take I'm it sorry, to the bucket. No, that, that's Kayla Scott. I'm sorry, Kayla Scott. Got the basket and gets to shoot one more. Nice rebound that time. Yeah, yeah she's already. De Pier Pearson's already got two rebounds tonight. They're working it around, trying to get it inside. Nice, oh, what a nice little drop, drop step. step, yes. You gotta like that, but Dara Parsons just doing a great job that time. Oh, nice block. She walked with it. Yeah. A little bit of travel. She got the ball. It's hard to give the big girl a, the ball while she's moving like that. It's so close. Uh, I don't think she was ready for that pass. As always, you I mean, see you, you got to be ready because uh, 
Berger will get the ball to yeah, you. Kadisha, Kadisha will definitely make the pass if you're open. Long number, uh, number four and a good rebound again by Sale. Right now, Hampton appears to be dominating the boards on missed shots. So. Of course, they've got some height out there. Then Sales drops out for that foul line shot. If she ever starts hitting that consistently, she's going to really be yeah. trouble. Kayla Scott bringing the ball up. Trying to set some screens for her. Nice block. Uh, again, block. <laughs> I tell you, Pearson does a great job. Good timing on the blocks. Uh, a cross court pass is tough. Nice steal that time by Kaylee Foster. Got in the passing lane, Brent. And then she could see the speed dribbling the ball, how much speed yeah, she's with, got. Yeah, with the, with the dribble, she was able to pull away a little bit. You can't be making those court court passes on a team like Bethel. No, well, and you're playing man the man. Bethel's doing a good job playing man the man, forcing the shot that time. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass. I really don't know. And that's Scott nice. with a runner. Well, I expected some uh, quick action out here, Bob. Yeah. They got a little bump out in the front. They're going to call a foul on uh, Bethel number 31. Is that 31? Yes. Yeah, first foul of the night. Kayla Scott. Out of bounds play. Oh, my. And we were here last night and uh, uh, Caldwell Durant, she put up 17 points, I think it was, last night or something like that. And uh, she just completely missed everything on that shot. She's not used to being that close to the basket, well, I don't I think. <laughs> but she hit about three threes last night. Is a good Neely Foster handling the ball now, and she's pretty good with a nice step back. Yep. About an 18-footer. She's got 16 points, six points already. She's gone from a layup to a 12-footer. Uh, she's got the whole repertoire. Good move. Just, just didn't finish the shot. Yeah. Well, that was a good drop step. Uh -oh. Good, good anticipation. That was great anticipation that time by Letitia Smith, number four. Bethel, I mean, Hampton's only playing with eight girls tonight. Yeah, four was moving when she stepped in front of yeah, her. Yeah, that's number four. That's a, a foul on Jamie Thomas, senior guard for the Bruins. Berger's bringing the ball out of bounds. Somebody's got to give her a hand. There you go. <laughs> Always got to have somebody to throw the ball to. Can't do this by yourself. No. That was good defense on the, on the part of, the, of Bethel number 40 right there. That, that's Nia Williams. It's Phillips, isn't it? I'm sorry. Keely. Yeah, Kelsey Phillips, you're right. Good turns. You just got to finish it. Oh. Threw Waited it. too long to get the ball to her. Yeah, threw it behind her just a little bit. Hampton got a lucky break on that. That was another breakaway on Bethel's part. They're beating them down court right now. I, I, I'm impressed with what uh, Bethel is doing under the, uh, the boards. They are really doing a good job with because they are Locking definitely the definitely outside outside underneath the basket. But they're doing a great job of, of uh, blocking out, putting pressure on the way. If you put pressure on the ball, it's hard to get the ball inside. Good. Well, they're letting them play underneath, Bob. Yeah, there's a little bit of contact when nobody got an advantage. No. Good hustle right there. Bethel's still in their man-to-man. -the -man. Well, it's almost like a zone. All enough. right, there's Sale. She just hit her first three. Wow, she and she was practicing last night. I was watching her. She can really hit them. She gets on a uh, straight. 
Okay, Keeley just lost that one out of bounds. Um, they got a seven and eight score. I tell you, this is uh, this contest. Even though different conferences, boy, these girls know yeah. each other. They've been playing against each other in the AAU leagues and everything else for five, six years. They wanted to play this game just like the coach said. It, this is a neighborhood thing right here. Yeah, absolutely, they know each other. They're playing a man to man, but they're sloughing it's a, back. It, it's a, it's almost like a matchup zone. Yeah. And it caused her because of the defensive pressure. Uh, she shuffled her feet. She shuffled her feet. Got a uh, traveling call. Another turnover. The Bruins number 10, Angela Robinson Williams got the uh, rebound and was hit, and the foul was called on uh, 32 sales. Sales. That's her first foul. Well, she shuffled her feet on that. Well, they're getting the ball inside both teams. They're yeah. just not finishing so far. Oh, she threw it too hard. A little bit yeah, too hard. She wasn't ready for that pass. Well, when you're that close, yeah, you at, don't want to throw it that hard. At four feet, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you take her head <laughs> off. Yeah, bounce right off of Keeley's foot. That's two times she's come off of. Off she, of she is so quick. Sometimes she's faster than she's able to dribble the ball. But that'll come. Oh, yeah. She'll get the timing down. She'll right. do a good job down there at UNC Wilmington. I'm sorry, UNC uh, Greensboro. Nice play. <laughs> nice play. She just picked her pocket. Yeah, just said, no, we'll, we'll stay here with the ball. I don't really. Uh, rebound again by Berger is just all over the place. Brings the ball up can go inside and rebound. Nice move, uh -oh. nice move. That was excellent, excellent job that time by Dara Pearson. Keeley all the way, oh no, that was Dara Williams. Nice little floater, about an eight footer. All right, it's going to be on number 10 for about. Yeah, that's uh, Angela Robinson Wilson. She was uh, said she blocked her. That's twice she's just tried to throw it over top of somebody without. It's hard to throw it over somebody's head when they put their hands up. Oh, what a nice pass. And she got bailed out. She lost the ball. But there was a foul called, and she's going to, well, I'm evidently she not to hit her hand when she was playing. Watch the replay. I didn't realize she was going up for a shot or had got in position for a shot. Yeah. Yet. Number two for the Brewers check in. That's Kayla James. And Kayla Scott sits down, so we got one Kayla replacing another Kayla. Oh, she got a second one. All right, with uh, less than a minute to go, it's a two-point game. Hampton's got the ball with a chance to tie to go up one. The Bethel Bruins lost the first game they That's played. That's the second foul she's drawn on number 10. The same officials called that same foul. And what she's doing, she's putting her forearm in, in uh, Siles, Sales' is back. Yeah. That's two on her, so he's going to have to get her out. He's going to call a charge, offensive charge. Okay. Uh, 
That was that's a tough call. That's yeah. Might be a little makeup there. I don't I'm know. not sure. It sure was questionable, but we'll, that, we'll leave it at that. That foul is on uh, how you fall Asia. away and get a charging foul. I don't know. Number five. Nice intention. It's just a little bit low for uh, 42 to handle. Yeah, she come in number 42 is Desiree Whitley. Checked in because of uh, young lady getting two fouls earlier. And here comes Hampton again with a chance to tie it up. They're down two with 30 seconds to go. <laughs> that shot was way off. But eight, plenty of time to score. She carried it. Nice pass. Oh, that's a good assist. Yep. By Naira Williams. Took it right down in and looked for the uh, player underneath the basket. Nice. Oh. 21. It's a nice shot right there. Oh, no, take it. What? She got it off. Well, Bob. Berger did a great job, I tell you, because she knew there wasn't much time left. We've got a two-point game here. We talk a little bit about what's going to happen in the, this tournament. Uh, the Bruins got the bye. They will play the number four, the winner of the number four and five seed up at uh, Woodside. And I think they'll play Saturday. I'm not sure when they'll play it. I know you talked to. Uh, yeah, he indicated that they, they got to buy the first round and they'll play the winner the following. And I think it is at Woodside. I think okay, right yeah, there. they're playing at Woodside. And then the Crabbers, even though they're number two seed, they got to travel to Hickory. Yeah. And, and I and think they're playing. Is it Great Bridge? I'm not sure. Great they're Bridge. Playing yeah, they're playing Great Bridge. And that's at 3 o'clock or something? 3 o'clock like, Saturday. Saturday yeah. at, at Hickory. And, uh, uh, if you haven't got nothing to do this weekend, you <laughs> want to see some good hey, basketball. Some good games all over the place. going to be at Hickory. They're going to be some played at, uh, at Kings Fork. That's where the Ironclad Conference 18, which is your four, Phoebus is in that league. They'll play at Kings Fork. We'll get to see some games over here. Which Very is few, Woodside. <laughs> right now in this first round, everything seems, uh, the closest thing is Woodside, I believe. Yeah. There, right? yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you go to Hickory, you, you go, you're almost North Carolina. Yeah, you can go down there and plan on spending the day. What was it uh, Danny Mitchell said last night? He said, the only thing I like about Hickory is when I see him, I wave because I know I'm almost the nags That's what he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've made that trip many times. <laughs> they, got a, they got a nice little uh, truck stop right there at the Carolina line that they knew when they built. And uh, my wife likes to stop in there. And uh, look at all the knickknacks. They got uh, everything China makes, I think, gets sense of that shop. I don't know. We got a little pause with the officials. Uh, uh, what we got coming, okay. Somebody coming into the game with some discussion about it. And that's. Uh, that's number 20, 20 for the Crabbers. And I don't have a 20. I don't have a 20 on my roster four. So he told me there was only have eight players, and none of them were going to be the JV players. So. Uh, that's quite well, the JVs are playing tonight it's over tough. Bethel. Yeah. Uh, Berger, a nice shot, but she was a fall away. One right between them. Oh, what a great job. One right between them. And here's my buddy, Walter Brower Sr. Very oh, good to see Walter. The senior Walter Brower Sr. <laughs> <laughs> He's so senior. He's, yeah, he's senior coach, senior. Right, he's there. Senior coach on the peninsula. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the state, probably. Well, that, that um, right, that's a two pointer. Two pointer by number 20. I'll find out what her we'll, name is. We'll was. find out who she is. I feel like I'm pulling on you here. Never touched it. He anticipated that foul. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that's number 30 for the uh, for the Bruins. That's her Brittany second. Brittany Bryson. That, he called on a block. You got to be kidding me. The basket was good. Yep. And that's the uh, second one on Michaela's sale. Five fouls for the uh, Crabbers and uh, four against the Bruins. So it's pretty evenly called. Uh, three, the old fashioned three point play. And number 33 for the Bruins checking in Raven Jarvis. Brittany Bryson sits down, takes a breather. Well, like we said, Hampton only has eight players, and uh, 
they're going to try to uh, keep this game at a pace to where they can play what they have. Nice move, but she just can't complete that, the shot. But that was one of the better moves yeah. I've seen her make. Than Good job by Naira Williams getting that ball out. And the 42 for the Bruins, Desiree Whitley got the rebound and a foul on the putback. And who are they going to call that? That's what I'm trying to say. It's on 20. 20. <laughs> who we don't know. Go ahead. Okay, let's see. What's the number to go with the line? 42? Yeah. Got out of hustle. Well, right now, Bethel's got a six-point lead on him, six, six twenty to go in the second quarter, and uh, it's at their pace. It's they're going. Hampton's back in that zone, and the Bruins are going to look at it, take the three. She just got pushed out of the way completely. Desiree Willie on the pocket. 42 just forced 30, 23 completely out of out from under the basket. That's what you call a good block out? From the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're going to call the same block out on 23. That's on 33. Yep. 33 for the Bruins. Yeah. Raven Jarvis. Oh, good good tap and drive. Good job that time by Sale. Michaela. Nice pass. Oh. I don't, you don't love the way now Williams passes that ball. If you're open, you're going to get the pass. You, you, you had a ball player that, that did that and he hit you in the head if you weren't ready. Yeah, got a young man by the name of Gary McClenny, Crow. Oh, buddy, he, he would tell you, don't go in there if you ain't ready for it. Um, <laughs> I tell you, what a great job that time. Nice drop by step. number 23, Dara Pearson. Yeah, he's Whoa, got a good game. Great, great drop step. Hampton's still in that 2-3 zone. Well, they're trailing by five, now, so the pressure's on them. And now let's talk about this. Hampton's usually a pressure team, but last night when we watched them, they had 12 players on on the on the bench um, playing. Now they got eight. Now they got eight, so they got to stay in that zone and try to protect at least through the first half and maybe half of the third quarter, and then you might see a press. They blocked that time by. Yeah, that was Pearson again. Pierce. She's uh, having a good game. She's got two blocks and about six rebounds and six points. And so uh, right now she's having a good game going on. Nyla Williams is the daughter of Eddie Williams, the uh, track coach over Bethel High School. And I asked her early in the year, so do you want to you want to run track for your daddy? She said, "I like basketball. I don't like running." <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say I may be wrong, but right now, just guessing, this may be playing in the Hampton saying, even though they're down by six, uh, if they can get through, like I say, part of this game yeah. with eight players, yeah. and be safe. Now, they got one girl, one important girl, 32's got two fouls on it, you know. But uh, if they can protect them, at some point they have to come out. All the way, she took it all the way in that yep. time. Nyra Williams with the zone. You should not be able to, to try penetrate, go, uh, penetrate all the way for a layup in against the zone. Yeah, that just should not happen. Bethel's still in there, man the man. And, of course, Hampton's trying to get the ball inside. And when they're not looking because she just wishes she could finish that shot. There's, there's Pearson again fighting for that ball. 
And the possession arrow goes to the Bruins. Now, Sales is getting that, that drop step inside, but I think she's missed about three of them so far. I think she, uh, maybe she's just pushing a little bit too hard. Well, and sometimes you, you expect some contact and you don't get it. Draw that foul. They're going to call it on number 21, yeah, Berger. Yeah, that's her second. And you got three minutes to go in the half. So, you know, if you, right now, if you're Alan Jones, you're saying, hey, you know, let's get out of this with nobody getting three fouls on them and, yeah, and, keep, and still within a single digit. And right now they're down eight, nine. Let me just say this, uh, Hampton has yet to go to the line. They have yet to? Yet to go to the line. Oh my goodness. So that. The 10 point lead, now Bruin, Bruins, uh, what they're doing, what Coach Johnson wanted them to do, they have, are executing. They're keeping the ball out of the hands of the, the big girls underneath, and then when they get them, they're putting a lot of pressure on them. Because they're going to have to hit some outside shots. Uh, oh, what a nice Keely. Play, Keely. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's almost a floater. She, she takes what you give her. Right, she but, didn't but, try to take it into the player. She drew up at five feet, used the board. Used the board. That was Thank the thing I'm, I'm impressed with. I see that. A nice right. pass. Yep. Nice pass inside she to Michaela. Back to a 10 point lead. They're still trying to work it down low. They're, yeah. able, to, they're able to penetrate right now and, and get well, what they want. Well, if you look at the zone, it's really spread out. It's almost a matchup. If you see what the, you know, the sales has come almost all the way out to the corner for 24, even when the ball's on the far side of the court. You see where she's at? She's yeah. You want to protect that basket. Well, they got out of where they wanted. Yeah. They made them take an outside shot. She waited a little long to throw yeah. the pass. But when she got the ball, she took one dribble, saw her. By the time she got ready to pass, it was almost too late. But Lisa was knocked out of bounds by the Bruins, so the Hampton retained possession. She is just, just not able to make that entry pass. No. Well, the number 30 for the Bruins, and that's Grace, uh, Brittany. Well, she's having a big night, I'm telling she you. she is. She can't. That's on number 40, I think. And that's the first shooting foul for the Crabbers. Yep. And they did call that on, uh, on Kelsey Phillips. Yep. That's her first. And these are the first two free throws for the Crabbers tonight. And we got a minute 18 to go in the second quarter. And it's a 12 point lead. Make it 11. 118 to go in the first half. Crabbers cannot be happy about this. That shot was probably taken a little quicker than what she wanted. Good Lord, somebody got to have to blow a whistle, <laughs> folks. A uh, foul on Aaron Williams on the blocking, and that being a one and one for Burke. <laughs> wow. Sir, <laughs> so that took some work to get that one. <laughs> it really, you had to work on it. You're absolutely right. <laughs> this looked like a World Wars two for one special there for just a minute. Yeah, Hampton's gonna have to hit these if they're gonna stay in it. Yeah. 
That was a one and one, so that's yeah. a possible of two points that you didn't get that time. And they got 48 seconds to go. I think Bethel's going to kind of hold this a little bit and try to, but unless they get something quick. Well, and it depends on what kind of pressure she gets, too, because she will drive yeah. and lost the ball out of bounds. I know Coach Johnson, he said, well, you know, maybe she was hit. And Bethel's in a 1-2-2 in a half court zone press there. Just going to try to good good play. And then they draw back in the man or man so they cross half court. Yep. yep. And right. Yeah. And that's the second foul on uh, Naira Williams. Is that, that two on her? That's two, yes. And it's one and one again. And that puts uh, Naasia Bowell on the uh, foul line. 20.6 seconds to go in the first half. This place is picking up. I mean, yeah. there's a big crowd going to be here tonight. Had to miss the front end again. That's a uh, possible four points that they right left there. on the line. If you were paying attention, you noticed you looked up at that, at that clock. Good rebounding. Uh, 23 for Hampton. I'm going to tell you what, what's a Pearson? She yeah. is, she's got, I think, nine rebounds in the first half. Wow. They're trailing by 11 right now, 20 to 31. Right now, everything is going the way Coach Johnson wanted his girls to go. They lost the first game over, over at Bethel, first game of the season. They didn't want to lose another ball game. They, they're using this as a momentum builder right, right. here. Both well, teams were. But I, I, I'm thinking... I may be wrong. The coaches have come in with, with a different twist on this. If you stop and think about what Hampton's doing, they come here with eight players tonight, and they got to go off and play in the tournament this weekend. Three or four, a couple of players are not able to play tonight for other reasons. Three players that were here last night have gone to play with the JV somewhere else as far as well, we they're playing over Bethel. Tonight. Playing over at Bethel tonight. And so he's got eight players. Hampton is normally going to press you from end zone, end zone to end zone, as you want to say. Right. But they, tonight they have shown no pressure. Well, they can't do it they because can't. If, he, if he gets people in good foul trouble, he doesn't have anybody to bring in off the bench. Yeah. And is that, well, then somebody like Keely Foster is able to penetrate like she's able to penetrate. You almost got to play a triangle in two or something like that. Because well, you've got Keely to have, and, and Ira Williams, yeah. they both are penetrators. So you almost got to have somebody back there to stop that penetration because they're beating them right now in that zone, and that's really difficult to do. Right. Right. But we'll come back and talk about that in a minute. Why don't you take us out of this? All right, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break and go back for uh, second time action. Hang loose. We'll be right back. Welcome, welcome back to the second half of tonight's game with the Bethel Bruins being hosted by the Hampton Crabbers. The score is 31 for the Bruins, 20 for the Crabbers. And Brent, you got some statistics it, for me. It's been a very interesting night as I talked to the coaches before and looked at last night's game. Bethel's got a team that spreads it around. They've got uh, six, seven players that have scored. One player 10, one player eight, one player six. Kind of spread it around. Everybody gets a little bit. Hampton has last night's game. They got two leaders most of the time. They got one player with 10, one with six, nobody else with more than two. Having said that, let's talk about the free throws. Hampton went to the line four times only in the second quarter. Two of them were front end of one and ones. Missed them both there, one of four from the free throw line. Wow. Last night when they played, played Indian River, and they won by 10 or 11, they were eight for 19. Now they're going into the playoffs. This is going to have to get better. You're going to have to be better than 50, 60% yeah, to win are. many games. Bethel last night when they played, played Blasfield, they were 11 of 21, 21 what, what much better, but it's better than 50%. But tonight, right now, Bethel from the free throw line is five of six. Uh, mm -hmm. So if they can keep that pace up, they're gonna keep this distance. But having said all that, it's a 31-20 score. Hampton's played the zone most of the night to protect their eight players. Yeah. Two of their key players have two fouls on them, and I think he's happy to get to the intermission with nobody and three fouls. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, let me talk real quick about a production crew. On cameras, we got Randy Bigoli, Susan Bowers, Rube Gabre, and Steve Fryer. Graphics, we got Andy, and he is teaching Matt Buckwalter uh, all he can do about gra graphics animation. Slow motion, instant replay, Krista Campbell. Camera control operator, Renee Camden. 
Chief Engineer Don Jarouse, Engineer Greg Lesko, Audio Greg Lesko, Director is Don Jarouse, Executive Producer, my buddy Andy Foley, who trimmed his beard, looks real good. And I'm with my buddy Bob Henson. <laughs> uh, he's been doing this so long that uh, they, the original films are actually on film. Uh, got a little... <laughs> well, here we go with the second half. Let's see if Hampton can... Uh, they're going to need to apply some pressure. They can't sit back when well, they're Hampton down by 11. Gets, Hampton gets the ball first. And last night, number five for Hampton hit three threes. Tonight, nope, they have not hit but well, one three, and that was 32. Just 21 shooting. And that, that, yeah, good, good rebound and, and put back. And there may have been a little bit of contact yeah. that time, too. Evidently, they're going to. They bring, they're bringing up the pressure. From back here. How could she call? Well, the guy standing right next to it. I'm not going there. It's just. He's caught, she's saying he's shooting too. But two to one. Yeah. <laughs> foul on, that's a third foul too. We never did find out who number 20 was. I, no. We should have done that. And I apologize for not doing that. Well, we'll hold you accountable, you know what I'm saying? I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, tonight somewhere where we're sitting somewhere, we'll, we'll rehash that whole mistake. <laughs> Kelsey Phillips on the line. This is the first one of a two-shot foul. Missed them both. And there she is. I tell you, that young that's lady her is tenth, a rebound. That's her 10th rebound, and it's, it's only a minute to go in the third quarter. And there's another rebound and, and put got, back. And she got pushed in the back. Yes, she did. <laughs> Just went right by. So that's Keely Foster. Yeah, right just by went, went right by. She's going to make somebody happy in college, I can tell you that. Yeah. Hampton cannot continue to exchange. Well, they're not giving her anybody a chance to uh, to, to, to post up and get a three shot. No. Bethel putting a lot of pressure on the three point shooters and well, just threw the ball away that time. Well, 21 was late getting there. Nice block. She got a little piece of that one. Yeah, she did. Keely got a little bit deep on that shot uh, and couldn't get it up. Berger handling the ball. But Hampton's not. Now that's a hole right there. Yeah. I was going to say, if you didn't call that one, folks, we might as well just go home. <laughs> Desiree Whitley said, you are going by me. <laughs> if you don't call that one, just, just issue free passes. That's all I can tell you. Oh, it's short. Oh, late getting there again. They got people down the court. And it thrown it away. Yeah. Couldn't make a well, decision. Put it between the two players instead of at one of well, them. Well, I'm all fairness to the the gal that threw the ball away. She thought the other girl was going to keep to running the basket. Yeah. And Probably. she didn't. She did not keep going. Right now, Hampton's coasting a little bit now. Nice drive. That was uh, Berger. She's got yeah. a great shot. They cut the lead down. Got picked by everybody. Wow. <laughs> got picked going going away and got picked going back the other way. Well, I thought we were playing soccer there that, for a minute. That was two steals. It was too fast for me to record. Huh? <laughs> Somebody's got to look around and go back, guys. There you go. Has she got it there yet? Not yet. Yeah, uh, just she's taking three shots and she just is short every time. Oh, that's. That, that's, uh, I tell you, everything that's going on here tonight, um, somebody decided they're going to start that taking was, over. That was 31, Kayla Scott that was handling the ball, and they called the foul on uh, Number Letitia four. Smith. Yeah. 
And that was just a touch foul. Yep. Here we go again. Now we saw this the last time I watched her officiate. She will take over a game. Well, she was here last night. Yep. <laughs> that game you're talking about? Yep. Nice drive, just couldn't finish it. And no foul. This girl down here is, doesn't have a whistle. Another rebound. Yep, she's 12 now. You gotta be kidding me. Whoa. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a quick timeout by the Bruins. That's he four, got to be five, kidding me. Five <laughs> point different now, 33 to 28. They've only issued one whistle out here tonight, folks. That's all I can tell you. Here, here's the replay. Let's take a look at this. How many times she gets hit? Push there. And she gets the rebound. And look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know what? At least they're consistent. They ain't going to call it error. <laughs> but the, the, the Bruins have scored just two points. That's correct. And, and, and Hampton has, has closed it to five-point game. Yeah. Well, I think they had a little talk in the locker room. They've got to get, make those shots. On, they're getting a rebound. They've been out rebounding Bethel for the most part there, except for a stretch in the second quarter, which Bethel seemed to start really blocking out well. Uh, Hampton's back to doing what they did in the first quarter. Now they just got to make the shots if they're going to stay in this game. You're yeah, right. All right, Hampton is in a full court, full court. press. Yep. They're going to trap. I tell you, that was a uh, costly miss by the, by the Bruins that time, but you could feel the momentum yeah. switching a little bit. Well, Hampton's trying to put the pressure with the big girls. All there, right. there was a foul at the foul line yes. that was not called. But here's <laughs> a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play, and you can get within two. You see who that foul was on. I didn't see who he called it on. 32, okay. That's her third. Michaela missed that one, but yep. still with. Just goes right between them. Yeah. And she is just well, too. you got a good ball handler. Oh, it's all a difference in the world. Oh, Jiminy Crickets. Wow. Getting a little bit ragged. Yep. There were bodies flying all over the place there. I wasn't sure what game we were playing, but Hampton is putting the pressure on them. Oh, oh, oh. We got, that's a, watch the drive right there at foul. They called it on 21 Burger. And uh, Kaylee Foster, the other 21, her like number is on the line shooting two. And she's a good shot. Put her Dick Ching move back up to, uh, well, that's a six point lead now. <laughs> Difference right now, foul shot. Yep. Well, Hampton's got a spread. Uh, Bethel's come out and playing almost a matchup zone like we talked about before. The difference for Hampton is the big girls to be able to get into it. I mean, they just can't finish it. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a couple of whistles that have gone deep here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're letting them play a little more than they did in the first half. Yeah, she walked. 
I wonder if he's going to yeah. catch it. Well, at least one of them did. <laughs> She's going to take over. Yeah. <laughs> she, I've never seen an official question another official like that before. No, I never have. I'm surprised now. Uh, nice. Too Williams late. Is, She's too late with the pass. Yeah. You have to get there quicker. Here she comes. Nice block. But she didn't didn't put her head down when got the ball. So number 40, that's her third. <laughs> that's her third. No, that's a jump ball. They're gonna call. They call a jump ball. They put a foul out there. They wow. Put a foul on forty. Yeah, that's her third. Well, I thought he called a jump ball. Yeah, there's some confusion somewhere. <laughs> there she is over the top. She doesn't see it. Got the ball to the hoop yet? And then she's standing around. Oh, oh you cannot call that a block. You cannot call that a block. She called that a block. That Are is you kidding me? That is unbelievable. Watch this replay. That's unbelievable. I mean, it's football time. Boom. Just bury your chest in there. <laughs> and that's four fouls on yeah, Berger. That's four fouls. Well, now I know why she hasn't been blowing the whistle. <laughs> wow. That's just amazing. Well, the Bruins have moved it back to a 10 point lead again. 2.16 to go in this third quarter. Grabbers came out and looked like they were going to bring make it a game. But they're just having trouble getting the ball inside. Well, it, but the Bruins are attacking. You gotta love it. Yep. Sometimes you can't attack and and penetrate when you got three or four right. players down there blocking yep. the lane. And that, that's what as, happened that time. As well as their own players. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just too much people in the paint. Well, thank you. Foul on Keeley Foster. Burger goes to the line. And that's the uh, first foul on her. Yeah, that's her first foul. Uh, got a foul shot. That's only their second made free throw. I like the way Bethel's spreading the floor. Yeah. They're, they're, they're trying to create one on one situations. But Hampton's playing with a gorgeous killing. Number two. Wow. Back to 11 point lead. That was Kayla James making that shot for the Bruins. He's got he's got a lot of people making shots. Yes, he does. Well, you look at Hampton, and Hampton basically got three three people scoring. Three people scoring. Here's the replay. Got a piece of it there, knocked it out of a bounds, but she throws throws it. The right. one thing that you, that you hate to do is try to save the ball under the other the opponent's basket. Yep. When that happens, they get a if they Free shot. get the ball, they get, you know, nobody's on them. 
Minute 22 to go in the third quarter. It is now a 11-point game. And, and and you have to take your hands off to the Bruins. They got beat the first time when they played Hampton. They did not want to leave a, a bad taste in the mouth before they go to the playoffs. Yep. That's the third time ken has been called for that push if she calls yeah. it on 10. Yeah, that, and yep. that's Angela Robinson Wilson. She walked. She dribbled. She dribbled the ball. Yeah, but she shuffled her feet after she got after the dribble. I think that's what she's calling. Well, I, sh I, I just saw the ball go to the floor and her turn to shoot. And Number 14 for Hampton. And now she Frick comes in for a burger. They got to get her out of there. Just carry it right down. Yeah, nobody's stopping her. Nobody's picking nope. her up. Nope. And they got this zone press. All the way that time. Good job by number four for the Crabbers. That's her first offensive point. Go with the ball. Yeah, but she's doing a little skip step. Yep. Well, she, she knows she wants to make that that drop step move, but when she does, she, she's already doing three steps. Trying to do two, two things at one time. You'll see the shuffle when she starts down the aisle. One, two, one, da, da, da. Yeah. A little music, please. <laughs> they got 18 seconds. Duffy's going to play for this last shot. This little number two for Delta Measures. That's, that's on uh, 32. And and let me tell you something. That's her fourth. Naira Williams drove in and dropped the ball off to Raven Jarvis. I mean, that was a great pass. Yeah. Yep. Well, they called the foul on 30 on 23. That's her first foul. Well, they that's not who was there. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, Hampton's going to like that. Yeah, that helps. It's a 12-point game, and they ain't going to make it happen. Yep. They've increased the lead by, what, two in the third quarter? Yeah, it was double digits. Yep. I, think, I think it was uh, 11 points. Well, they got it by 12 now. Yeah, it was a 31-20 to 20 at halftime. So they've picked up. A, I thought Hampton was going to make a run. Both teams well, made did. runs. Both teams Hampton, made runs. Hampton got it down to, to five and had a chance to, to, to Take get it. it to two or three and could, didn't make it, couldn't make any foul right. shots. But in, but in that quarter, uh, you had four people that scored for Hampton, one person with two points, and the rest of the points were scored by basically two players, the same two players. Well, what I said at the beginning of the game, be, beginning of the telecast, that the – the Bruins were red hot, and you can see why. They are they are very aggressive on the offense and defensive end of the, the court. They will drive the ball. They will dump the ball off to the big uh, the post players underneath the basket. Naira Williams does a good job of that. Keely Foster does a good job of that. Plus, if they if it's open, they will just take it in for the layup. Yeah, well, the, and, and what you're talking about is, is Hampton's got two big post players, but very few people who make an entry pass. It's almost like they've got to get the ball themselves and create. If Hampton had a somebody could dish the ball like Naira Williams to both of those big girls, those two post players for Hampton would both be in double uh, figures the whole time. Yeah, every game. That was terrible. <laughs> it's a takedown. Yeah? 
And you, you know, how long is he gonna leave, be able to leave uh, Booger in? He's gotta yeah. leave her, he's got her in, and you know, she gets a fourth foul, she gets a fourth foul, but she's your best scorer they got. Right, 32, um, uh, Sales has already got four. Look at that, left-handed. Yeah, and that's Nyra Williams. Yeah. I, that's the quickness, you know. They're as, good, they're as good a team as penetrating as I've seen all year. They haven't hit, they haven't haven't hit, hit a three yet. They haven't hit anything from the outside yet. Yeah, they hit one, and that was Sales. She hit it in the first quarter. Joe Hampton starts hitting something from the outside that's not going to open up the inside. And there's nobody there for rebound. There's three people standing around. Yeah. Look at that. There she comes. One. Must have called it on two. I didn't see it. No, I tell you, I didn't see it either. Number two got it. Yep. On a hold. That's seventh. That's a one and one for the uh, uh, Crabbers. They got to make these one and ones. They yeah. got to get the first one. You never get a chance for the second if you don't get that first one. But this is their probably their best foul shooter at the line right now. And she's one for three right now. That's it. She needs that. If Hampton's gonna, if Hampton's gonna do anything, they've got to get to the line, stop the clock, and score some points. And if they're gonna close this gap at all. It's up to 13 points now. What they need to do. But they've got to get some stops. Yep. They can't let Bethel keep scoring. That's what she wants right there. <laughs> That's that little shot that yep. she showed in the first half. Peter well, Foster does a great job with that. If you don't give her the, the glass, you draw it and shoot that eight or 10 footer on it. All right. And they're going to give her the uh, give basket her the and one. Yep. And they're going to call the foul. Who's the foul well, on? Was the 21 sure. had to be oh, on. Number 10, they said. Oh, number 10. That's her fourth, if I've got it right. Yep. Yep. Nobody there for Hampton to get the rebound. She just well, walked over and, and picked it, it up. She kind of fell back on that shot, too. Yep. Nice pass, nice block. And she took a chance. I mean, she's there with four fouls now. And they're going to bail her out. She got up in the air. Call that on number four for Hampton. And that's her second, I believe. So they got third. third. Okay. And it was nine shooting fouls, so they get the ball out of the bounds underneath the basket. I have to tell you, Bethel moves that ball quick. And there she is again. I'll tell you what, she's. Doing a heck of a job. Nobody there. She just took it right to the hole, and everybody else taking the time coming down. Yeah. Good hustle. Yeah. I'm telling you what, um, I got to tell you, Parsons is playing her heart out out there tonight. And she is that. Uh, she's on the floor, she's on the boards. I mean, right now, Hampton's carrying the ball to the hole before anybody gets in there for rebounds. They're getting one shot up, and nobody's there. And either Hampton's not getting down quick enough, or they're just running away from their help. Well, what's happening, and, and I'm going along with what you're saying, but when Berger brings the ball up, she penetrates. The rest of Hampton is Hadn't not got there. there. And there's nobody there to rebound in case she misses the shot. Right. Uh, right. And Bethel, they hustle both ends of the court. And they're attacking and putting pressure on the Crabbers. And part of that is depth. Hampton's, yeah. look, Hampton's looking a little tired. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, well, that, they played last night. Yeah. And they're they're going to turn around and play Thursday. And they're playing eight people tonight. And, uh, y- yeah, you might be a little tired coming down that floor by now. <laughs> I'm tired watching. I mean, I, I can't do that. But uh, And that may explain it. I mean, Hampton's penetrating, getting the ball up. Or in the first half, they had two rebounders in there that were scrapping. Right now, they're not quite getting down the floor as fast, and I think part of it's got to do with depth. Yeah. Just, just, I'm tired. You know, just, just worn out. And, of course, uh, you, you got to say Sales has got to be careful. She's got four fouls. She just can't go flying in there. Well, and, and Booker's got four fouls. So, two, we had yeah. two of the... Uh, Two of the main players. Players that, that's going to score the most points for the Crabbers both have four fouls I on I think them. Berger's got three. I think they took one and gave it to somebody else. Oh, okay. I think. Well. <laughs> it kind of got moved some I know things. she hopes to. Yeah. Things kind of got moved around a little bit. But right now, Hampton may want to think about using their timeouts more for rest. <laughs> Hampton is in a 2-2-1. And so they don't see her. There it is. Should have been a... Th- Oh, are you kidding me? Look at this. She's pointing the other way. She's fake calling the She's calling it on 23. They're on sales. Yeah, no, on uh, Pearson. I'm sorry, yeah. The other girl was backing her right out of there. She reached up, never went for the ball. Never went for the ball. If they got it on replay, Pearson just reached up and got the rebound, and they called it on her. They show that replay. I don't know if we've got it or not. Bethel's making their free throws. Yep. And they've increased the lead to 13 with a chance to go to 14. I don't know what that lift the leg thing is, but it must be working. Blaine Valley, she's going to call one of them a night. She, <laughs> she called two last night. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. Yep, she hit, that's three. her second one. She needed that. Yep, that's that, her That's her second three tonight. Well, she's the only one that's getting the open look. Yeah, yeah. She's Berger, going out to the Berger who is the normal good three-point shooter, is not getting, yeah. she's just not getting the open look. There's yeah. a lot and, of pressure on her. Yeah. Just, Watch the replay here. Kick it out. Yep. Nice shot. Sweet touch. Oh, it was. She gets that inside game down with that outside touch. She's going to be good for Hampton University. David Six is going to do something with that, I'll tell you. Yeah, he will. Now, she's not only got good size, she's got, she's got some size to her that well, be, be and, hard to move. Well, and plus, if she's got an outside shot like that, yeah. that makes her a double threat. Yep. Yeah, she's strong inside, so she's got something to work with there. Well, we got 5.05 to go. It's back down to a 10-point game. Bethel in front. Um, Hampton's in a 2-1-2 full-court zone press to see if they're going to be able to trap. They did. Nobody following a shot. That was a big, big miss. Yep. That would have hit. That would have been. That would have been The big. momentum would really have shifted. Yeah, that was a big shot. Now, Bethel's game is to play for time. Time's his yeah. friend. Yep, they get rid of that. The clock's on their side yep. right now. Well, I am so impressed That's, with, <laughs> with she, Sales rebounding tonight. Yep. She's just throwing it up. Uh, it just can't work. Now, she's I just looking. She's calling where I couldn't see a thing. I couldn't see it. I'm in, in direct line with it. Yep. Well, I tell you, it just, it's sometimes frustrating. And, and you had an official over there 12 feet from the call and just looked at her. Just did not make a call at all. Well, when it gets quiet in here, it gets quiet well, I'll tell in you here. what, I thought everybody <laughs> left while I took a nap or something. My age, you can't tell when you take a nap anymore, you know. <laughs> you just wake up and go, all right, hey, well. <laughs> I must have taken a nap. <laughs> yeah, I missed something. 
Yeah, it's just not happening. Yeah. They're just not, she's just not, she's forcing, forcing a little forcing bit. Forcing it a little bit, yeah. yep. It's not natural, because I can see when she normally shoots, it's like, it's so smooth. Yeah. And it looks, I just she's, don't see that tonight. She's, she's not coming off any picks or anything. She's just having to work for it herself to get the shot up. Nice little turn. Yes, sir. Flash into the post. Taking it right in there. I'm going to tell you right now, she's got 10, 16, 20 points. And I tell you right now that uh, Naira Williams has got to have at least double digits in, in assists. Oh, yeah. And it's good to see you're not afraid to go down and get no. that ball. And she's got four fouls. Putting everything on the line tonight. <laughs> you know if you drive to the basket, there's going to be a whistle. Yeah. Bethel is understanding that. Both Naira Williams and Kelly Foster are driving. They're going to be. And if they don't dish off, they're either going to get the shot or get fouled. And with what their, their ability to finish, uh, they're going to create havoc. They're going to be interesting to watch in the playoffs. If they can keep their rebounding under control, they're going to be tough. Yep. Back to a 14-point lead. Yep. That's about the biggest it's been. Yep. There you go. Yep. Did a good job of penetrating that time, but you got to make some stops with 2.50 to go in the game. If you're Hampton, you got to make some stops. You got to stop the Bruin, get the ball, and go down and score. She might have, should have taken that all the way in. Just a little off. Yep. And she hit three last night. I think they're tired. I think the legs are a little bit gone tonight. Well, Between leg, last night and tonight, and only eight players. When your legs go, your shot goes. Yep. Roy Johnson is screaming. Yep. Time out over there. Nobody's giving her a time out. Well, we got a 12-point lead, 2.07 to go in the game. Bob, it's been fun. I mean, it's yeah. been long this year with all this new conference stuff going on, and we're trying to figure out if the teams are in the same schools now. But I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know if they show up at the same building with all this Merrimack and Penn South and Ironclad and all this kind of stuff. Uh, Watch the <laughs> go. Watch. of the uh, – this is the drive of, of Berger right in and just right – all the way in to the basket. Nobody stepped in and, and put pressure on him. But you're right. The, you and I have gone to a lot of ball games. Yeah, many crickets. And, uh, you know, it, the competition on the peninsula is still good. And it's a shame we don't have a, a peninsula district anymore. But uh, you got to, all right, the BHSL says we're gonna, this is what we're going to do. Well, let's, we got to do it. Well, I just hope at the end of two years, three years, wherever down the road, they have the courage to stop and look at it. Because what we've seen this year is quite a drop off in money being brought into these gyms. Well, and you can say it how you want to, but that's the bottom line. What was uh, it? Ray Smith told us that they, when Great they, Bridge came over and played, they were, they were. $220 gate is what and they And he said it about six people. People from Great Bridge came to the game. Yeah. You pay 220 for the gate. That doesn't pay for officials. Officials. No, so. I hope at some point they stop and live, but I don't think that'll ever happen. I've never known anybody with a master's degree to admit to a mistake. So anyway. <laughs> oh, I, I've got a master's and I made a mistake. Yeah, what, not going on? <laughs> <laughs> the mistake was telling me you did. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, Lord have mercy. But I, 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 we were talking today. I'm trying to figure out who was sitting around where when they decided to name these conferences. You know, I don't, Penn, well, somebody went to Penn State. Uh, somebody's a history buff. And, uh, <laughs> well, all I can say is uh, when you were talking to Roy Johnson and he said all of a sudden I heard Monitor Merrimack, he says, I didn't even know that was our conference. <laughs> That just happened last week, I think. <laughs> oh, great day. Well, it's been fun. A minute 45 to go, and it's a 14-point lead. Uh, there she goes again. Yep, she got it. But they, 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 they got to make stops. You're 12 points down. You got to make yeah. steals. Uh, I think they, they're playing kind of a zone matchup. <laughs> and, it's, and it's eight flights up, folks. <laughs> so we might get her back for field goal kicker next year. But she put that in the stands. But it's been fun doing this tonight. And, yeah, uh, I've and, really enjoyed uh, it. We got a chance to, to do the boys game here in a few minutes and start this all over again. I guess somebody from Hampton hit that because I, I didn't see it. Uh, that's Keeley going down. They're just, they're just playing keep away. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I thought it was going to have to going to have to pull out and get a warrant before they're going to blow that whistle. Yeah. Uh, they're in a Little double late. bonus too, so that means uh, uh, they'll be shooting two every time. A little late to be uh, trying to stop it now. Especially when you're filing her. Yeah. First miss. Nice rebound again. Sales has done a good job after getting a fourth foul. My Lord. All, right, let's All the officials were down here. Now she's going to call a foul. <laughs> well, we had a scrum in the middle of the floor. Yeah. Nothing. That's five fouls on uh, Berger. Yep. Uh, that, that's a shame. She played it. Hey, she played a long time with three and four fouls. Yeah. Well, this is a replay. And this is something else. I mean, there are people going down, knocked down. <laughs> and made them both. Take it all the way in. That's number four for the Crabbers. Yep, that's our second basket for Smith. Yep. Well, come on, guys. <laughs> it's not necessary now. Yeah, it's pretty well uh, wrapped up. Hey, okay, what? You don't want to put her at the line. No. Now Williams has got a good shot. Yep. Got them both. They're just going to let him go down now. Dribbling. That's her third. Yeah. That ought to be about it. Yep. Unless they make a foul here. Oh, good try. 61-49. <laughs> well, it ended up a 12-point game. Well, and, and Bethel revenged their earlier loss yep. to the, the, the Crabbers. 
Well, I, I, ha I hope this doesn't wear out all the teams. Bethel, I think, gets a bye going into their round. Hampton, I think, turns around and plays, what, Thursday? They play Thursday, yeah. Yeah, so they got a one-night rest, and they played two games here back-to-back. -back. They played only with eight players tonight. Uh, it's been a great game for both teams. It's an inner-city rivalry. doesn't mean much. We talked about it early in the, in the tournament. Uh, but if both teams go on from here, we wish them both success, and I hope we get down the line to where we can follow them both somewhere in the playoffs. Yeah, I hope so, too. We want to thank our crew as Randy Bigoli, Susan Bowers, Wube Gabray, uh, Andy Foley, Mac Bookwalter, Krista Campbell, Don Chirouth, Greg Lesko, and thank you, Brent Musgrove, for the final score. Bethel 61 and Hampton 49. Good night, everybody. <laughs>